I don't want to sound like a buzzkill. That is like so much pressure to put on yourself. <laughs> If you're new, I'm Goldie, and this is the Lazy Ballerina Club. Welcome to the LBC. I'm so glad you're here because in today's video, we are talking all about YGP. I know I haven't competed in YGP for about a million years now. I do have some tips and tricks on how to survive YGP, and I also just want to talk about my personal experience because it definitely took me a few years to actually find success at YGP. Also, can we just talk about this shirt for a second? The back says Swan Lake, June 2020. And then the front of the shirt says never happened. Just thought I should wear it for today's video because we are talking YGP, we are talking survival guide, and we are talking about all of the things that I wish I knew before I actually competed in YGP many, many years ago. Make sure you are subscribed down below, like this video, and let's get into it. If you have no idea what YGP is, YGP stands for the Youth America Grand Prix, and it is an international ballet competition. It's an amazing competition where you can get scholarship or exposed to artistic directors at all of the major ballet companies take class with school directors from literally all over the world and you can even walk away from YGP with your first professional ballet contract. While YGP is such an amazing opportunity and competition, and there's so many pros to competing at YGP, just the thought about competing and walking into a YGP regional or YGP New York can be extremely overwhelming. Let me help you out and I am going to be talking about a few little mindset shifts that you can make to actually be successful at YGP and enjoy your experience. So the first major little nugget of wisdom that I wanna share with you guys today is to completely get out of the results of the competition. I know that sounds crazy because YGP is literally a competition, but I am telling you to remove yourself out of the getting the top 12, placing in the top three, or qualifying for YGP New York. As soon as you shift your focus, that is when you will find true success in that competition. Use it as a performance opportunity if you really think about it when is the next time you are going to be on a huge stage in a gorgeous costume performing a classical variation in front of an audience I'll wait because it might be a while until you're in that situation again I don't want to sound like a buzzkill but as soon as you get into that professional environment or even a year-round program those solo opportunities become very slim to none and it might take you a second until you get on that stage again performing a solo once you are actually in a company or year-round program so being able to actually perform your variation and enjoy those moments on the stage is so valuable that is exactly what the judges are looking for at YGP. You have been rehearsing that same variation or that one contemporary solo for months and months and months and months. Trust me, I know I've been there. I have been in that studio. I get it. Because of that drilling and doing that same variation over and over and over again until you like want to cry, it can easily become super robotic. You can get on that stage at YGP and go through the motions without even thinking of the steps that you are doing. That is so clear to the judges and audience. Now is the time to add your little unique touch or your artistry or you flirting with the audience or I don't know. There have been the most beautiful dancers doing the most beautiful variations and they do six pirouettes and they balance on their head and everything is like perfect. But I really don't care about any of it because it looks like they are sleeping in their face. 
I'd rather give it to the girl that fell on her face right when she entered because she was actually dancing and attempting to be a true artist on that stage. The next little mindset shift that I want to tell you is to shift your focus from the actual competition to the master classes or the scholarship classes. This is like the second time I'm telling you to like stop worrying about the competition, but I'll say it again, you really have to stop focusing that it's a competition and start dancing like there's no tomorrow ladies in no way am i trying to say to phone in your variations that is not what i'm saying at all but i think a lot of dancers get so wrapped up into their variations or group dances that they completely forget about the master classes and scholarship classes that is when those artistic directors and those school directors get a chance to actually see how you dance and how you move and how you work inside of the studio if you compare an hour and a half class to a minute and 30 variation that is such a major difference you are face to face with all of the artistic directors in every single ballet company all over the world i mean i'm just gonna guess the main reason why you are competing in ygp is to get a year-round program position or a contract or start your professional career when you are in those scholarship classes you have no idea what opportunity will come out of those classes so i highly 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 recommend you put a lot of your focus and energy into those classes and take some of the pressure off of yourself when it comes to your variations or contemporary solos we get so caught up about the idea of being perfect on stage and you only have that one pirouette that you need to nail or that one balance in the variation when that one thing that you want to have happen doesn't happen on stage it's easy for us to kind of just like throw in the towel of the whole weekend and be like well I didn't land my one pirouette that I wanted to so I failed the whole weekend was a wash and I'll just try again next year that is like so much pressure to put on yourself shifting your focus into those classes takes that pressure away you actually get to dance for for an hour and a half in a studio like you do every single day and like I said you have no idea who's watching you in those classes and even if you think you didn't have a good class there are so many amazing 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 opportunities that can come out of your YGP weekend that have nothing to do about your variation or whether you fell on your face or did 64 pirouettes and if you did do 64 pirouettes, can you send me a video? Because that is like unreal. The last nugget of wisdom that I want to give to you before I go into all of my failures, there's a lot of failures and successes in my YGP journey, is to use your first year as a trial run or a little practice run to get out of your system. It's definitely rare for you to walk into YGP your first year, nail every single thing, and place in the top three and pack your bags to New York right off the bat. Maybe if you're like a prodigy, it's not as difficult, but that is something I definitely, definitely cannot relate to. I'm just saying there is nothing wrong with using that first year as just a trial run or gaining experience for the next year. There are so many moving parts when it comes to YGP. There are so many girls in and out of that dressing room before you go on stage. Then you get backstage and there's like 15 girls running the same variation as you. And then you get on stage, you have a minute to do your variation you probably black out it's a lot that is why i am giving you permission i am allowing you to go into your first ygp or this year's ygp and just like feel it out take your classes do your variations there is no reason to put so much pressure on yourself your first time competing at any competition this year just feel like it's only fair to talk about my own experience when it comes to YGP because let me tell you, my road to success when competing was a bumpy and windy road to say the least. Let's get into all of the lessons that I have learned when I was actually competing a million and 10 years ago. I think I was 15 when I got my first variation and I was so excited. I had a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful tutu. I rehearsed that variation for months. When I say for months, probably like six 
to seven months. You could say I was prepared. I knew that variation back, front, I could do it in my sleep. I didn't even have to think about it. My first variation that I competed with at YGP was a cute little John Q moment. I had my sweet little fan, got my tutu, had the rose in my hair. It was a whole shebang. So, <laughs> I get to YGP. It was time for me to do my sweet little key tree variation that I have been rehearsing for six to seven months at this point. Let me remind you. I get on stage, I flick my fan open, I do a cute little sodi, I get my leg up. I'm just trying to like keep it cool. So far, so good. I'm doing my little Aishapes in the corner with a cute little attitude turn. And then I don't know what happened. I don't know where my brain went. I completely forgot my variation on stage at YGP. I sure did. It's like I went into outer space for a moment. Thank God my ballet teacher was in the wings. I remember it like it just happened because it was so traumatic. I'll never forget this. She was screaming, Balance! Balance! Oh, the sun just disappeared because it was just such a dark time in my life that the sun was like, yeah, I can't support you through this storytelling. I quickly do like a little weird like pot de boubre. I don't even think you could call it a balance. It was so janky. And I just like scurried to the back corner <laughs> to finish my variation. I'm sure you could gather by that information. I did not place. I did not qualify to YGP New York. I used that YGP that year as a learning experience. We were going to be better next year. The next year really wasn't eventful. I did two variations instead of one. I did a Paquita variation and maybe another Don Q variation, maybe to redeem myself. Once again, I didn't make top 12. I didn't qualify for anything. But then, let's talk about my third year. It's actually the last year that I was able to compete at YGP before I went away to a year-round program. Since I never qualified for New York or I didn't make top 12 both of my years, I really was not focused on any of that going into my last year. All I wanted to do was enjoy myself, dance my best, and kind of like kiss my sweet little YGP experience goodbye. That is why I was successful. Remember my first little nugget that I gave you at the beginning of the video? Here we are. I do my first variation and I remember coming off stage and kind of feeling like like I wasn't really like in my legs, if you know what I mean. Walked off stage and kind of like shook it off. As soon as I stepped on that stage, the energy compared to the first variation was night and day. I felt confident. I felt gorgeous in my tutu. I nailed the variation as best as I could. And then it was time for awards. Start with pre-competitive and then juniors. And then they get to the senior division for contemporary solos. I was like half listening when they were listing these off because contemporary was never like my thing. I was much more a little Trina back then. They called my name for top 12 for contemporary and I was like shocked, confused, and I was like, oh my God, like I am not a contemporary dancer. Like I don't know what I'm doing. Scurry on stage with my little paper that they give me. I was just like happy, content, this weekend could be over, let's go home and celebrate. Before that, they had to list off the classical variations. I was just so happy that I placed at all that I'm honestly not focused at all to the competition. But once again, they read off that list and I placed in my classical variations as well. And I was just over the moon excited it only took me three years but <laughs> we made it but once they finished reading off the top 12 for classical variations then they announced the top three there's no way in a million years that i would ever place and that's okay and then i placed third place for the classical division at ygp my last year i was just so proud of myself i felt accomplished i felt like all my work had finally paid off and I was just beyond. I was truly, truly beyond. And then we get to YGP New York. Again, not focused on the competition at all. I was focused on the master classes and scholarship classes. So I did my variation on stage at YGP New York for the past three years before that. That was such a major goal of mine. But then it got to the scholarship classes. And this is why I told you to focus all of your energy on the classes instead of the competition because I do my scholarship classes 
is. And at the end of the week, I don't know if they still do it this way at YGP New York, but you walk into the lobby and they have this huge whiteboard with like a bunch of numbers. And at the top it says, you've got mail. That basically means that if your number is on that whiteboard, school or company is interested or has offered you a year-round program, scholarship to their summer intensive, or even a contract to a company. I remember walking into the lobby and seeing my number on the whiteboard and I almost like shat myself. Once I found my number, I went to the woman that was dealing with all the numbers and she handed me an envelope and in that envelope, it said that I received a full scholarship to the Washington School of Ballet in Washington, D.C. The only reason why I went to Washington was because of that full scholarship that I received from YGP New York. That is why you need to put your energy into those classes because I did not place in my variation, but it honestly does not matter. Because the director at Washington saw me in the class, he offered me a full scholarship. And I'm just so, so grateful for that. That is my YGP experience. That is how I got my year round program spot. Guys, I'm telling you, there are so many benefits to YGPs that I am so grateful that I competed in. I'm so grateful that YGP exists for you guys because it is truly such an amazing opportunity and experience for ballet dancers all over the world. I don't want you guys to think for like a second that I'm telling you all of this to brag or to say, oh my God, I'm such a great ballet dancer and look at all the success that I had. Because if you actually watch the video, you could see that it wasn't like an overnight success in any way. If you are on the fence about whether you should compete in YGP, I hope you take this video and think about it because I don't know where I would be without YGP. It was some of my favorite memories as a ballet dancer. I hope you enjoyed my little YGP survival guide and leave a comment down below if you are actually competing in YGP this year or you're thinking about competing. Let me know. I want to support you. I want to see you kill it and I guess that's it. I will see you next week guys. Bye!